All right, I am here with Helen Foster, ISM Consulting Manager, and you also lead a workshop over the summer called The Vital Role of the Executive or Administrative Assistant, which I'm gonna be asking you about here shortly. But, um, you know, Helen, great to have you on. And, um, you know, when you are ready, are you ready? We've got four questions for you. You ready to Let's go? Let's jump in, I am ready. All right, so our questions today are gonna to actually be focused on the Administrative Assistant role. And the first question that I have for you is, how can administrative or executive assistants effectively support their supervisor, uh, whether, that, whether that be the head of school or mm -hmm. another senior administrator, while mm -hmm. we're all working from home? So how does that Absolutely. work? Absolutely. That is a fair question. And the answer is two-pronged, Clint. We've got high-tech solutions, which in this day and age is not surprising that everyone gravitates toward. But they're also low-tech solutions. Let's cover the high tech first. Two examples. This is really easy. A lot of people are already doing this, but a surprising number probably are not. There's simply a matter of sharing calendars and sharing access to email. The easiest way for you to keep track of what your supervisor's doing is to know what the plans are for a given week. There are pros and cons to people sharing their emails and their calendars, and I understand that sometimes those challenges are not surmountable um, in a given workplace, but that is a high tech solution, if you will, um, to making communications and really day to day actions fairly transparent. And it gives the executive assistant or the administrative assistant a real leg up on helping support the direct supervisor. Another high tech solution is very accessible, affordable project management tools. A lot of us are looking at online graduations online moving up ceremonies, things that traditionally take place every year for a school and this year must be done in a much different setting. So some easy project management tools that are out there, including Asana, Monday.com, they're web-based tools and it's a way for more than one party. It may take a team to pull an event off and each team member could have access to that particular project and move things along in an expedited fashion there are a lot of affordable tools out there to pull off events and things of this nature in a very affordable and, and strategically quick fashion. So those are the high tech solutions. Low tech solutions really focus on communication, communication, communication. And what I mean by that is having routine meetings with your supervisor at least once a week. I frankly prefer a Monday, Thursday check-in twice a week. Um, and those are formal planned times. They're the ad hoc times when you hit a quick Zoom meeting perhaps to deal with an, an issue that's emerging at hand. But routinely meeting with your supervisor at least once a week, and I would advise twice a week, is a really good way to stay in touch. The other thing that I would encourage people to do is anticipate what their supervisors are facing. Whether you report directly to the head of school or you work with admission professionals or advancement professionals, no matter who your direct supervisor is, trying to anticipate what is their position on any given week about any given topic in their area of influence, and then trying to figure out what you can do to support them in that anticipatory fashion. That's where you add value. That's great. And, and you know, I can even just piggyback on, on one of your answers real quick about monday.com. You know, even at ISM right now, our team, uh, our lives are pretty much run by calendars in combination with Monday.com. I have no idea what we would do without it. So, you know, I exactly. can definitely as a testament to, uh, to those tools as well. So, um, all right. So that's great. Question number two. Um, for, for the administrative assistant whose job you might, people feel, well, a lot of my job is on site. It's being accountable for moving people, moving paper around, right? But what do they do now when none of that really is relevant and we're not in the office? How, if folks are saying to themselves, you know, how do I maintain my value and continue to show my value? What are your thoughts about that question? It really comes down to us sitting back and looking at what we know to be happening in our schools today in this work from home environment. Based on what you know is happening or you see the outcomes of decisions that are made, and so you can sort of back into how those decisions might have been made. Figure out what you can do in this current situation. For example, can you be involved in meetings where you can see 
decisions being made and actions needing to be taken and you can claim some of those activities and in that way support your direct supervisor as you execute in this work from home strategy. Uh, you know, you could bring another, another perspective to a conversation. You could wear the head of a parent or a faculty member or some other constituent and really bring some insights into a conversation so that more thoughtful decision, decisions are in fact being made. If we thought we worked in silos before, we definitely may feel that way today. And being able to bring those different perspectives to a Zoom meeting conversation can really add value to your organization and set you up as a meaningful participant now and going forward. You could also use this opportunity, Clint, to really consider what are your professional development opportunities that maybe you haven't had time or inclination to think about in the past? Is there a skill you can learn that will really set you apart for the next school year and the years to come? You know, do you do a lot with Excel spreadsheets or could you do a lot with Excel spreadsheets if you could understand the darn things and how to manipulate them? Well, now's a great time to take advantage of a lot of accessible, and by that I mean affordable, content available on the website in terms of teaching yourself some of these skill sets. Don't forget, we have the good old print books too. Um, Amazon and Barnes and Noble are delivery. <laughs> there are plenty of guides out there, quote unquote, for dummies, where you can really add to your skill set. Think about what you can add to your portfolio of tools that will make you more valuable going forward, whether school comes back into session on campus or remains in a remote setting. This is really your time to figure out how you can shine now and going forward. And so that, that provides a great segue into my third question here. And it, it is about, you know, really what's next. I mean, the, the big unknown right now is when are we going back? Are we going back on time? So with that being said, you know, there's a lot of planning involved. So how can folks start to plan for next year, not knowing whether we're going to be reopening the buildings or if we're going to stay in this remote learning mode um, or doing, you know, some sort of hybrid or combination of both. So how can you start planning? Absolutely. I would say, let's plan for all three scenarios. Let's think about what policies and procedures to take a really concrete example. What policies and procedures does your school already have in place? Or more concretely, what is missing? What policies and procedures is your school silent on today that you really should have in place? So that when you come back in the fall, whether it's come back to the building, or simply come back into session, your policies and procedures are up to date. It could be immunization policies and procedures. It could be a matter of what you need in terms of your parents acknowledging receipt of or review of handbooks, um, authorization forms, permissions for children to be in uh, school photos. Um, here's an example. If your school doesn't have a policy or you've been relying on collecting paper the first couple days of school, to make sure all those authorizations are in place, you might be the one who does due diligence on electronic document authorization. A commonly thought of commercial application would be DocuSign. You're interested in your school providing a safe, reliable, accessible method for your parents to quote unquote sign on the dotted line and that electronic signature becomes part of your school's records. And on the off chance that we are not all back in our buildings in the fall, a lot of your data is going to be sent out electronically. And you do want signatures back. So that's a very concrete example of how your school affordably works with your parents to make sure that you have what you need in this new world. So think about what you need to create, what you need to update, and finally, how do you communicate it? Yeah, and you know, going back to a previous answer uh, in terms of how to maintain value, you know, being on top of those procedures, things that, that might be as simple as being prepared with DocuSign, tremendous value given that there are so many new procedures and things to consider that we never considered a couple of weeks ago that now everybody's gonna need to be prepared for um, no matter when we open. So exactly. th there's a tremendous opportunity to, to add value. Um, my last question for you, and this goes back to the professional development and the workshop that you have this summer, and I wanted to ask you about it because since things have changed, I wanted to talk to you about 
how have things changed with, with your workshop? So I could say your workshop, which again is the vital role of the executive or administrative assistant, um, that is uh, part of our Summer Institute course. Obviously that's gonna be held virtual this year. That is the one course every single year, like clockwork, it sells out and, and people love it. So now that it's gone virtual, talk about that professional development opportunity um, who should attend? What are they going to learn? And have you added anything into that course to reflect our, the current events of, of the pandemic and you know, the COVID-19 pandemic that we're going through right now? Absolutely. I'd like to say that it's as a direct result of my stunning delivery and facilitation, but really the course is a sellout because there are very few dedicated resources that are focused on the executive administrative assistance in the private independent school setting. So I'm happy to say that we, I believe, very satisfactorily fill a much needed niche of professional development. This is for people who support heads of school, other senior administrators, and it's really about those who, whether or not they have their own direct reports, they're supporting others. And it tends to be administrative in nature, but it can run the gamut from very basic duties and tasks that are truly administrative in nature to very critical thinking, strategic oriented, um, oriented um, opportunities for growth. I think the main thing that people need to focus on is this session, as I constructed it, has always been hands-on, very practical. There are uh, guides and tools that people walk away from the session with. That remains the same, I'm happy to say. What's new is this addition of operating in a virtual workplace. I think that's very important because as you mentioned earlier, that's where we are now and we don't know where we're going to be in the fall and we could be in a blended scenario. So people need to appreciate how I do this very effectively going forward for longer than May 31st or June 5th. Um, so I have added that module um, in an effort to be responsive to the reality that many of us are facing. Um, and I continue to develop those hands-on tools those very concrete takeaways so that people have very practical means of delivering their work so that the school can deliver its mission with excellence. Fantastic. And, and again, for folks that are interested in that workshop, we're going to put information about how you can learn more about the workshop below the video that you're watching right now. So um, make sure you, you click there to learn more. And with that being said, Helen, thank you. Thank you for allowing me to put you on the hot seat here with four questions. I thank appreciate you, Glenn. it. Thank you. All Appreciate right. Thanks, everybody. Be see well. See everyone Be in well. July. Bye-bye. Yes. See you. See everybody in July. Take care.